Chapter 18 My first successful, though stumbling, efforts to access the didact's experiences produced scattered impressions of darkness, brilliance, rolling suns, grief and sickness and glory, complete chaos. My ancilla was still balky. I had to find my own way of accepting and interacting with the knowledge. What I managed was a crude arrangement, missing fully nine-tenths of the subtlety and subtext and power, but at least the memories began to open to me. Soon, I was jittering and plunging my way through a great space battle, events moving far too quickly for me to make much sense of it. I had no idea where or when this was. I could not correlate these events with any historical record. Complicating the recovery was many hundreds of points of view, threading through and around the central events, chopping and intercutting, and a remarkably different perception of objective reality. As a Promethean, the didact simply saw things differently. Clearly, a thousand years ago, when entering battle, the didact had plugged into the full sensory experience of thousands of his warriors, something I could barely imagine and certainly not control. My ancilla fell far behind, glowing between all the half-processed, crudely assembled information like a distant blue star, frantically seeking details which connected all this to real history. What startled me as I explored the threads and tried to collapse them into a usable narrative was how pitiful objective reality was all by itself. The combined threads, even the chaos of uncombined threads, were far richer, far more evocative and informative. In my education as a manipular, it had seemed to me that my teachers and even my ancillas had been intent on having me memorize the bare facts and not add my own interpretations. They did not trust me to enrich the whole. I was young and naive. I was foolish. Even now, it was obvious the didact's memories resisted my adding any coloring from my own experience. I had not been there. Now I understood that no matter how sophisticated one became, the total richness was something no individual could ever capture or truly know. It must not be constrained. It is ever raw, ever rich. I tried to emerge from this pool of ecstatic excess, the so-called solid reality of the ship, of my armor, of the space and stars around us, was suddenly ominous, frightening. I had difficulty distinguishing these different states. I was drunk. I fell back from the memories and tried to re-engage with my core self. And suddenly, as if everything had come into focus, I rode the whip-snap of over a dozen threads, warrior threads. They had a place, a name, an historical marker. I could not scramble free. I plunged deep into the first battle of Charum Hakor, one of the final engagements between forerunners and humans. I saw thousands of war sphinxes spiraling in clouds around the planet like flocks of deadly sparrows, twisting and entangling human ships, sending them tumbling into the atmosphere to disintegrate or slamming them against the unbending pillar of a precursor ruin stretching high over the planet, or being slammed in return the memory thread suddenly burning bright at the end, winking out, shriveling away. Passion and the flow of a warrior's life, and too often, death. The deaths jerked and whipped around me, the end of a warrior's life in a spreading, sparkling plume of molten metal, carbonized flesh, plasma, and pure gamma rays. That flailing, crying, terrified abruptness felt as sharp as a plunging dagger. I could not stop it. I saw the implacable precursor ruins of Charum Hakor, studded with human constructs, like ivy growing on great trees, vast cities and energy towers and defense platforms operating at geosync and equigravitation, little less sophisticated than forerunner ships and platforms and stations. Humans had been a great power, a worthy adversary, technologically. What about spiritually? How did they connect to the mantle? Were they truly our brethren? I could not know. The didact had been remarkably open to those ideas at the time. You must know your enemy 
and never underestimate or belittle them. No human threads in the domain, no way of knowing their reactions. The domain is not complete. Was that my thought or the critical observation of the didact himself, realizing the greatness of his enemy? I managed to lurch free and came to myself in my cabin under the single wall lamp, gasping, crying out, my fingers scrabbling at the bunk and at the bulkhead as if to dig myself free. Truth was not for fools.